Good afternoon guys, we're back at our East Keel or job. Uh, we were here a couple of weeks back when we were uh, doing a bit of an explanation on site cuts. Now we've uh, advanced uh, quite a bit further, so whereas before there was just a slab and a lot of dirt and machinery, we've now uh, installed our retaining walls and on this particular job we've got three types of walls. Two are block and one is sleeper. And, uh, and between the block, um, although they work, function exactly the same, in that there are concrete blocks filled with concrete. Uh, one is external, which is to the driveway of this particular house, and it's uh, cosmetic as well as structural, so it's in a nice charcoal, uh, nice charcoal colour. The other ones which are behind us are purely structural, and they are just a standard grey because they're going to be covered with plaster and brickwork and the likes. In the um, the last one we're here, we're just standing on a uh, on a concrete polish slab. The boys have been on site now, and we've got uh, the first uh, start of the frame. That is the ground floor frame, so that's a stud frame. And you'll see that uh, the the structural block wall uh, is um, acting as a, as a, as a retaining wall to support the land behind it, and also a structural wall to support the floors above it, which are going to be. Um, running along this section here and across to the front and down and over the garage. With, um, with, with, with the uh, retaining walls, uh, you'll also see um, probably from here, um, you'll just see down, down along here that they are filled with concrete. So this is what gives the wall its strength. Um, and embedded in that concrete is also um, a considerable amount of steel bar, so which gives it rigidity. Now the purpose of this wall, uh, this particular one here, is uh, sitting inside the garage, so it's going to be visible. So it is um, in in, uh, in in your grey uh, or your dark grey or your charcoal grey. Uh, the um, from from the driveway here. Uh, we'll be, there'll be steps running up here and up to the laundry so the face on on the garage side which is here um, is going to be visible this side here is um, is, is going to be uh, underground so it will be uh, eventually waterproofed and then uh, taking the load of this soil which is going to be uh, backfilled against this wall so the concrete which is inside this block wall that gives its rigidity and stiffness and stops it from uh, being bowled over by, by, by the weight of the soil behind it. If we go up to the uh, upper levels, we'll see the extent of these walls uh, are getting higher, but you'll see they're also filled with concrete. And their purpose is they'll be retaining this garden bed through here. And the most important one is this one here, which is the biggest one and that's going to be supporting the land uh, is if you look down there supporting the the adjoining neighbors land uh, so any land any any land that uh, potentially slips over over time will land against this wall and it will support it um, from from bowling over and, and landing into the driveway uh, again you can you can see at the top of this wall uh, it's uh, completely filled with concrete all the way down to the street and that is a very strong rigid wall uh, designed to take the load of all this soil which is going to eventually be backfilled with crushed rock down here is going to be uh, built with uh, crushed rock and drainage and, uh, and, and that'll take all of this weight <clears throat> if we uh, Turn around behind us, we've got the uh, lesser, uh, still structural, but uh, obviously not supporting as much land, so these get changed back down to the timber sleeper walls. Uh, here in front of us we've got um, uh, uprights, some, some fairly big one, big sleepers, um, which are retaining over a metre and a half, and then as we go up into the backyard, uh, you'll find uh, they get lesser in height, because they reduce, they're holding less 
uh, less soil back. Um, around here, we're in the basement, or the, we're in, in the back of the house, under the house actually, or eventually. And uh, and this is the um, this is the retaining wall from the backside. And what you can see here, this black sheeting, that's actually the waterproofing, which uh, is going to protect the this whole wall from any moisture that comes down through these rocks and in, uh, into the underground or what we call the subfloor. You can also see here some conventional construction. So these are what we call brick piers, and these will also be supporting the ground floor floor work, which the building will actually sit on. Um, I'll try and make my way up the top here so you can get a better, better view. So here you'll see uh, the house gets lower and lower to the ground. So all these block, these little brick walls here, is that we call them, uh, they're actually supporting the, the floor, which is the ground floor of this house. If we walk to the uh, edge here, there's another um, uh, small retaining wall, which is retaining the land between the neighbor's garage and this, pro neighbor, this person's property. And here you can see the uh, steel bars, which uh, go inside the, uh, in the concrete wall to create, give it that extra strength to uh, support uh, the soil which is going to be pushing up against this section here, basically. I'll just move the camera a bit. Yeah, so it's going to be landing up, uh, up along here. Um, and then as we go down, down the street, we can see that the retaining wall is following the excavation <clears throat> back down to level ground. So there's the excavation we were looking at last time when we were here, and this is your retaining walls and all of the uh, um, all of the waterproofing that's going to be protecting that from the outside. So um, there you have uh, the next stage of this um, this job in uh, in East Kilo, and uh, we'll get back uh, as the frame gets a little bit more advanced and show you um, a little bit more of the conventional building which will uh, take place uh, once all this ground floor work is um, is taken care of or this subfloor work stay taken care of. So this is probably, probably the hardest part uh, of the build and uh, once, once the, these floor joists are all in uh, we're going to move back to conventional building and, and, and much faster pr uh, production. So just getting back to the, uh, or recapping, there's your um, your walls. So you've got your, your, your block walls. You've got your uh, uh, foundation that they're sitting on, which is this um, concrete here. These are all under the house, so they're, they're, not, they're not very cosmetic, cosmetic. They're just plain standard blocks. There's your... Uh, your uh, timber walls, which are a garden feature, so they will run along the along the back there, and uh, and then we get to the um, uh, to the cosmetic walls or the gr the, the, the grey walls, which uh, are uh, serving a dual purpose of landscape features uh, and structural feature. So uh, once again, thank you for uh, listening and. Um, if you need any help with uh, anything to do with um, building on a sloping site, feel free to contact uh, Renmark Homes at www.renmarkhomes.com.au.